Yeah. Hi. Hi, what? Mr. Cho. How are you doing? What, what is going on? How are you? Doing fine. Very well. How are you? Wonderful well, that it works out today. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice to meet you. Thanks for taking a minute out today. Yeah, you're most welcome. <laughs> so before we get into your interesting life, you know, I, I come from a house. We have one, two, three. What do we have? Three dogs, two cats, three cats. Ah. We got a lot of animals, so I, I, we're, we're animal that's people. Nice. Yeah. So oh, that's lovely. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So before we get into your life with you know being a doctor and loving animals and everything that goes into who you are, I want to know how did you survive COVID? How did you get through that three year period now that the world's kind of opening up, and how did it change you? Oh, actually. You know, we kept working in the hospital. I mean, we didn't close. Like It was not working from home like for so many other people. So it was a bit different. And for me, actually, I went pretty well through COVID because it was a time of, yeah, let's say, thinking about what's important in life and uh, re-evaluating a little bit everything. And uh, for me, it was also a great time to move ahead with my coaching career. So it was pretty good, actually. So it was an interesting time. And it has shown us actually... You know, what we are used to do, it can be changed from one minute to another. So we have to appreciate much more what we are doing, what we are able to do, even that we are healthy. So uh, I think it was really a time of, of recollection, actually. And uh, for me, I, I went pretty well through it. And uh, yeah, it changed the outlook a little bit, I would say, because uh, I think it let us understand our own mortality that that things are not just indefinite and uh yeah i think for me yeah it, it was it was a time like that so let's get to the core of exactly what you do for a living if you were in front of a bunch of third graders and one of the kids looked up and said hey what do you do for a living how do you answer that child <laughs> <laughs> okay uh I treat falcons. I'm a doctor for animals and uh, I'm specialized in falcons, these beautiful birds of prey that are really amazing. And I'm also in charge of the largest falcon hospital in the world here in Abu Dhabi, in the United Arab Emirates. And it's very, very interesting, not just to love animals, but also to treat and to heal them. It's something that is so satisfying, actually, it's so beautiful if you are able to, to rescue or, uh, let's say, a really sick or, or critically ill uh, animal, falcon or, or other kind of animal. So that's what I'm doing, but I'm also taking care of people. So I'm coaching people. I try to let them live better lives, especially when they have bad experiences, like in their childhood or later on. So I try to help them to overcome those yeah, difficult experiences and to enjoy their life in a much better way, in a healed way. Excellent. So you're in Abu Dhabi? Yes, exactly. I'm in Abu Dhabi in the United Arab Emirates. I'm far away from you, yeah, you <laughs> on are. the other side of the world. That's wonderful. <laughs> yes. I've never talked to anybody this far away, I don't think. Is it beautiful there? Oh, it's an interesting place, really. I mean, we have a lot of desert, of course. Yeah, it's a very arid climate, but it's a very vibrant country here. It's Everything is so much moving ahead and everybody's motivated. And that's beautiful to see, you know, like in other countries, it takes years to get, let's say, a building permit and to, to build, a, let's say, a, a huge skyscraper here. It's done just within a few months. Everything is finished. So things are moving fast here. And and it, it, it's, it's totally amazing to be here. And in the same time, it's a melting pot of so many different nationalities. Yeah. We have around 200 different, different nationalities here. So you can learn a lot about different cultures. You become very tolerant. You can widen your own horizon. And that's an incredible experience. Absolutely. So let's go back to the third grade. What did you want to be when you were a kid? What was your dream growing up? I knew already I will be a doctor. When I was five years old, I knew I will be a doctor. So I, I studied very hard at school. I took Latin at school because I knew as a doctor, you have all these special words, special medical terms. So I was really studying very hard. And yes, in the end, I became a doctor. <laughs> so let's go back to where you were born and raised. Where were you born and raised? And how did you get this feeling to become a doctor and the love of animals? 
Well, I was born and raised in Bavaria, in the beautiful countryside of Germany, in Germany's, uh, Germany's south. And uh, it was a very lovely place, a very yeah, a rural area. And there you had already a lot of contact with animals, everything from dogs to cows to horses, everything from A to Z. And I always, always loved animals. And this had been really, really fascinating for me all my life. Uh, I had even, I started with a small bachi. From there, I moved on to a rabbit. And from then, I moved on to dogs. And now I have a huge variety of different animals. But the love of animals was always there. So who's been your hero in your life? <laughs> my hero in my life? Wow, that's a good question. <laughs> Uh, honestly, I believe the hero in my life is actually my mother, because um, she didn't have an easy life and she was very, very sick and um, she suffered from a mental illness and uh, she was really brave to to fight through it and not to give up. She never gave up. And when you see how somebody who is in a very difficult a position in life and who is really, really ill, but never gives up, it is incredibly motivating and inspiring. And she has always inspired me because she had the will to keep going to, yeah, to get healthy again. And that's where my love of animals comes in again, because our dog was supporting her, was supporting me. And uh, that's where it all came together. So if you can meet anybody alive on the planet right now, who would it be? Who would you love to spend some time with? Oh, that's a cool question. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I would love to spend some time with Master Shi Hang Yi. Um, that's a Shaolin um, monk uh, in a very, very famous uh, monastery. It's called... Um, uh, the Shaolin Europe Temple, uh, that's actually located also in Germany. And he's uh, doing some fascinating work between the old Shaolin arts uh, as a kind of Kung Fu arts, but also with the more, yeah, let's say more meditative side, more the life side, what is important in our lives that we start rethinking our lives and he brings it all together. So it is about our mental wellness, our physical wellness, and also that we have the idea that life can can offer so much for us and how to live life in a better way, actually. So I find that fascinating. What was the first animal you had? What was the first animal, the name, and how did you get this love of animals? My very first animal was a very tiny bachi, a yellow, cutie, tiny bachi. And it was, a, it was a she, it was a female, and her name was Pipsy, because uh, they, they make a nice sound. So it sounds like peep, peep, peep. So that's why I called her Pipsy. And uh, she was the beginning of my love for animals. She was just fascinating. She I had her for 12 years. She, wow. she got quite old, actually. Yeah, yeah she, she reached a good age. All my animals get really old. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And from there, I moved on to my little pet rabbit. So, and then I moved on to bigger animals. Interesting. So what is the motivation for you every day to do the work that you do? What is it? You obviously have love for the animals. You really want to give of yourself. What is that motivation every day for you to do that? Now, regarding animals, I believe they give so much back to us. And many times we are not even aware how much they help us in our daily life, how much they can give to us. They can heal us, you know, not just, yeah, physically, it's also mental help that they are giving us. And I've even written a book, uh, an award-winning book about how pets can help us, your pet, your pill, 101 inspirational stories about how pets uh, lead you to a happy, healthy and successful life because they can do so much more for us. And I I love to let people understand it's not just we have a dog and we go for a walk and it's good for us as an exercise or we are losing weight. It is the other benefits that we get from it. And uh, like, like, for example, with a dog, you mentioned that you have dogs. I have dogs myself. For example, there had even been studies if somebody has a heart attack, if they have a dog after one year, only 3% of those people who had a heart attack have passed away. But if they don't have a dog, it's more than 20%. So even they keep us alive for a longer time. And that is fascinating. So it's not just to treat the animals. I love to do that, of course, but also to educate people what animals can really mean to us. And we need to change our perception because it is so much more than what we always think about. 
What's one of your favorite success stories that you've been a part of as a professional? Oh, my favorite success story. I believe it is that I I didn't just stay there as a veterinarian to take care of animals, but I moved on in life to become a mental health coach. And uh, that is fascinating to see because uh, like, especially also in the, the mental coach area, um, I had, for example, I, I had just recently, I had uh, one client and she was always suffering from from things which she didn't know what was going on and uh, in the end I did a past life regression with her and uh, she actually had an issue in the past life that went to this life and all her life in this current life was affected by what happened in the previous one so in the end she said you know I always had a feeling there is some kind of thing around my neck I cannot swallow I went to so many doctors and we found out that she had a rope around her neck in her previous life so it was totally crazy but after we did this session it's a kind of hypnotherapy session she didn't have any problem on her neck anymore she was just fine she could swallow perfectly and this shows that there is so much more than we can do, actually, which is totally fascinating. And uh, I like to drill down to the root cause of everything, either with animals or with people. Because as a doctor, you want to know the root cause. You want to know what's the real problem. You do not just want to treat the symptoms. And that's the same in both of them. So that's why I'm really fascinated by it. And that motivates me every day to make a change in animals and people's life. So what is what do you, what is it that you've done that you're the proudest of? Oh, I've done what I'm the proudest of. Uh, maybe the proudest was that I found two new diseases in falcons. Uh, this was definitely something very, very special because they were not known before. And this was a disease or two diseases that can be transmitted to humans. So this was a very, very amazing experience that I published internationally. So this is something, yeah, I'm, I'm really proud of. I'm happy that I could find it. So everyone out there has a perception of you. You have family, you have friends, you have clients, you have colleagues, but you ultimately run the show. What's your perception of you? Who do you think you are? <laughs> well, I am a person who likes to help others. I believe I'm here to, to try to help and support animals and other people to live better lives, actually. And that's what I try to do. I try to help them, as I said before, to try to find the root cause, to treat the root cause and give them a possibility and to give them an opportunity to change their life in a better way. Because we all deserve it. We all have a right to be happy. And I try to do my little share to let people and also animals yeah, live a happier life. Um, and that's what I'm here for. And that's what I try uh, it's, you know, life is not about money. Life is not about a position. It's not about a job. It is about the impact that you can create on other people or other animals. And I think this is what, what, what should be, what we should be striving for, because, you know, money comes and goes, jobs come and go. But if you change just one person's life, or if you heal one animal and you change this life, that's an impact that will last. And then this will become a kind of legacy. So that's what I want to do. And that's how I, I see myself. Very well said. So if anyone wants to hire you, learn more about you, anything about your world, where can they go? Yes, they can go to my website, www.coachformentalhealth.com. And I have also made a special kind of a free guided meditation that's on my website, www.coachformentalhealth.com slash gift that helps people who have, you know, these deeply buried emotions they cannot get them out they are really like they feel numb they feel stuck they don't know what's going on so they can listen to that and then they can also join my join my program i have a special coaching program to help people yeah to to connect with their their deeply buried feelings to overcome their traumatic experiences which is called uh, the deep uh, inner transformation within 30 days uh, program and this helps a lot that's like a one month program and this takes people from being completely traumatized to changing completely and living different lives and better lives wonderful dr moeller this has been so good you got such a great heart there, there's so much good work you're doing and I'm so glad that we, we had the chance to speak from your beautiful country. Thank you for taking time out today. Thank you so much, Mr. Chowany. I'm really honored to be on your podcast. It's really lovely to be on 
the show and you do a wonderful work. Keep going and I think your audience will really appreciate it in the future also. Excellent. Thank you. Take care. Thank you so much. Take care. Have a good day. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.